Today I wanted to take a look at how to read calendar events for all users with the Graph API. Here we're logged into Office 365 looking at portal.office.com and if we pop open the admin gear we can come into the admin center and this is helpful just to check a few things, make sure your tenant's well configured, um, the different user accounts that you're going to have, and any settings that are tenant-wide. But for development, we really want to go to portal.azure.com. And this is where you're going to learn a little bit more about your tenant and be able to register custom applications. So when you think about Graph API, you know, you can connect a couple of different ways. You can connect as a user or you can connect as an application. And when you're doing more background jobs and scheduled jobs, you might want to connect with an application identity. Now, SharePoint has its own model with app ID and client secret, and it, but there's also the same concept in Azure. So if we come over to Azure's app registrations, we can make a new application and we could call this read all calendar and this would be single tenant kind of go for all defaults essentially just give it a name and hit register and when we do that we want to write down the name of our application so we'll save that over here into notepad and we want to take a look at a couple of different settings so there is a client id for the app that was generated and there is a tenant ID that's generated. And we come over here to secret, now that we have these first two numbers, and we want to generate a secret for the app. So here we'll say new client secret, expires in two years, um, description, just give it the same name as the app. There we go. Copy the value to clipboard. Cool. So here we have the secret equals that particular value. And then on the overview, we had the app ID equaling that first one. So really that's kind of the client ID and client secret, best way to think of them. And then the tenant ID is that third value. With these values, we can connect and make Graph API calls. Now for permissions, we really haven't set up anything yet. So over here on the API permissions, we want to do add a permission. And there's a lot of different choices here. The big one is the header, where it kind of shows all the different things that Graph can do. So we'll pick that out. And yep, and we'll do application permission, calendar, Calendar read, reads calendars in all mailbox. So that's sort of the global store permissions. And by the way, the same stuff exists for other artifacts. You could do contacts, you could do chat, you can do mail, uh, whatever different you know, data discovery you need to support. Graph API is pretty thorough. We, we cover everything through here. I mean, there's different settings with teams and channels and SharePoint sites and you name it. We've got uh, all sorts of different endpoints. But for today, we want to focus on something simple. We'll look over to calendar events that are for the entire organization tenant-wide. So we'll go ahead and add that permission and we'll find calendar read. We'll do grant. Now this grant button here is consent for the full tenant. And yep, there it says successful. Cool. The reason we want to do that is it provides um, the ability to look at more than one user, and it's not user specific. Now, next, we'd like to look at some PowerShell code that can connect into MS Graph, run the API calls, and go ahead and loop through different events for different users. Uh, to do that, we need to get a token, an authentication token, and that's why we were collecting the values from earlier. And there's really three of them. There's the tenant ID, which the tenant that we're actually connecting into. We'll go ahead and collect that. And then we have client ID and client secret. So we'll put client ID and we'll also put client secret in here. So that provides our connection, which Office 365 tenant. And then what's the client ID, client secret, which go back to the, the app that we registered in Azure. And you can actually make an HTTP call to get an authentication token with all of this. So there's a post method over to login.microsoftonline.com. 
you feed in the tenant name and in the body you do client ID, client secret. Most important attribute here is client credentials uh, because that will uh, provide the client ID, client secret. It's not a user credential. It's not a user's password. It's not a single user, but we're using this app identity, this client kind of model, and that will provide a token. And then we have a function for reading some data. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and execute things with the token. I need to update the code with a do while here at the bottom because it kind of fetches data in pages. So if there's too much information, it'll page and do uh, them in batches. So there we go. And we're able to retrieve a token. So this top part up here is making a HTT post to log in Microsoft online, and it's getting back an access token. And that helps with um, the authentication. It really gives us a token we can use for the data calls. So there's two major steps. Number one, get a token. Number two, get data. So from PowerShell with our access token, we're going to look at two different data calls. The first one is to the graph user endpoint to loop all users. And the second one is to the events endpoint, also with graph, to get the events for one user. So it's two loops, all users that are in the, the tenant, right? And then for any single user, let's go ahead and pick up their particular events. Now you can see the UPN variable here is the user principal name for the user we are currently looping. Uh, with all of that collected, we come down here and do a little bit of parsing, pulling out different properties of the event, and we want to echo on the screen, start time, end time, just yes, we have an event, here's some of the data about it. And finally, closing the loop, we have a while next fetch the next uh, event. So this is kind of interesting because it's a, a do while, and we want to go forward, fetch the next event, and be able to populate that next grouping. So when we assign the events here, it's basically saying, do we have a next page? So you know, we, we have a next page, there's more data we haven't seen. Okay, then go ahead and fetch that next page to download it essentially, right? And then the while will turn around and loop us back up to uh, here. So this allows us to do paging because we're actually doing these at uh, a thousand at a time. Just in case you have larger data sets, you gotta think about paging when it comes to the graph calls. So pretty simple script, get a token uh, with a client ID and app secret and then come down here and go ahead and loop through uh, the events and pages. Go ahead and hit F5 to execute. We can see the green for the data call and we should see yellow for data coming back. All right, and here we can see all of our yellow line items, different start and end times with IDs coming back on all the different events as it sort of loops through some test data that we have. And that's, that's what we want. We want to see that, you know, it's possible to go ahead and loop through. It's possible to query the graph API. You know, we are able to get these events returned and then sort of look inside of them at the different properties that would be available. But the key part for this video is really the token handshake that once you send this client ID and client secret, you can turn around after that and go make data calls, enumerate users, enumerate events, whatever data calls you might need. And you know, being able to register that in Azure AD where we have our client secret maintained here and we have our client ID over here, that enables us to get into the Graph API and automate our data calls with something like PowerShell. Thanks for watching.